السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. نحمد ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم. مالك يوم الدين. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين. أهدنا الصراط المستقيم. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. آمين. قال الله تعالى في شأن حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وديائها وعلى آله وصحبه دائما أبدا صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Last, I guess, what, almost three months now we've been talking about Imam Hussain al-Islam in Karbala and we'll continue with that today, inshallah. Last week we were talking about when Imam Ali Akbar the oldest son of Imam Hussein al-Islam, he goes out to go and fight. And how he's martyred and then eventually Imam Hussein al-Islam, he goes out and he picks up the body and he brings him back. And, you know, these are things, of course, we listen to, we hear it, but we don't feel it. We, and then sometimes we think, well, if it was my son, then you know, what would my emotions be? But this isn't any son. This is the great grandson of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the great grand of Ras grandson of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who looked like Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these are the people. You know, who truly are the flag bearers of Islam. So when Imam, <clears throat> when Imam Hussein al-Islam, you know, brings him back and he lays him next to the tent and then, you know, he goes inside and he advises the women to be patient. You know, after everybody, he advises them to be patient. Inna Allah ma'as-sabirin. You know, indeed Allah is with those who are patient. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the sacrifices or the test that he will give us, in the end he says, Mubashir is sabirin You know, glad tidings to those who are patient. And patient isn't that, oh, I'm going to be patient up to this point. You know, like, oh, you know, I can't stand it anymore. And that means I'm not patient. And again, these are the people with whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly is. So now, after the martyrdom of Imam, Ali Akbar, you, know, you only have three males left. Two men and one child. As far as males. You know, the rest of the handful that are left are all women. So you have Imam Hussain al-Islam himself, Ali Ausat, who, who is known as Imam Zain al-Abidin, and Ali Asghar, you know, who at this time is six months old. Ali Asghar is crying, and so the women of, of the tent, they ask Imam Hussain al-Islam, they say that, why don't you go and ask them for some water for him, at least? Uh, what is he going to do against them? And Imam Hussain al-Islam, he tells them that, uh, you know, I know they will not give it, but because you're insisting, I'll go and ask them. And he goes to them with his son in hand. 
And he raises them up and he says to them, he says that, look, you know, your fight is with me. You are thirsty for my blood. Even if you give this child some water, what is he going to do against you? And as he's speaking, you know, one of them who had already notched his arrow shoots him, shoots Imam Ali Asghar, six-month-old child in the neck. Hermala. And so when Imam Hussain al-Islam, when he brings him down and he takes the arrow out of his neck and his hand is full of blood and he wipes it on his beard. And he goes back and he lays him and actually <coughs> meet or greet meeting greeting can be afterwards either before or after. So when he, Imam Ali Asghar is the only one that he buried. You know, as we've talked about, he would go out, pick them up, bring them back, and lay them next to the tent. He didn't bury any of them except Ali Asghar. And the reason for that is, is you know, we'll go over later, inshallah. And now when he goes into the tent, Ali Ausat, or Imam Zain al-Abideen, who is sick, you know, this is the young son of Imam Hussain al-Islam who's in his late teens. He's sick to the point where it's hard for him to even stand, high fever. And he starts to get up. And Imam Hussain al-Islam says, you cannot go. And he says, do not deprive me of this honor that I give my life for you. And, he's, and his father tells him that you cannot go because you are to continue the tradition. And Rasulullah Sallallahu said that every lineage will be cut. Every lineage will be cut, except for his lineage, which is through Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein al -Salam. And he instructs him on certain things. He also instructs him that after what happens, happens, that he is to inculcate patience in the people. And then also he instructs him that afterwards when you return to Medina Munawwara and you go to the Rawda of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam give him my salam and tell him that I have fulfilled the vow that I took with him. And then he goes into the tent of the women and you know again there are only a handful of women his two wives, his sister, Bibi Zainab his daughter, and maybe one or two others. And he instructs them also to be patient. That do not complain about what happens. And so, he goes out, gets on his horse, Guljanan, and rides out. Everybody else he had seen off, and now there's no one to see him off. And he goes before the army of Yazid, and he says to them, he's, he says, you have no excuse for what you are about to do. You know, he's already reminded them of who he is many times. 
And now he reminds them one last time. He says, I am the, do I am the son of Fatima. The leader of the women of Jannah. I am the son of the Lion of Allah, the conqueror of Khaybar. I am the grandson of Rasulullah. Ah. Whose kalma you recite. We are the ones in whose house the Quran was revealed. You know, when Sayyidina Ali, Karamallah Waju, when he went to discuss things with the Khawarij, and they were quoting the Quran to him. You know, see, the Quran says this, and the Quran says this. And he says that you are, recite, or you are, you are quoting to me a Quran is Amit, the silent Quran. Whereas I am Quran in Atiq. You know, Rasulullah Sussam, what did Bibi Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu say about Rasulullah Sussam? Kind of khulqo Quran, that he is, he, his character is the Quran. He is the walking, talking, living Quran. In Surah Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa says what? Ar-Rahman, Allama al-Quran, Khalaq al-Insan, Allama al-Bayan. So Rasulullah Sussam didn't only bring the Quran, he is the explanation to the Quran. And he says about Sayyidina Ali, he says, Ana Madinatul Ilm wa Aliyun Babuha. That I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its door, is its gate. The only way to attain that knowledge is through Ali. So this is what Ali Radun says to the Khawar. He says, I am Quran and Atiq. I am the explanation to what you are saying. And so Imam Hussein he says, I am the, we are the ones, meaning the household of Rasulullah so we are the ones in whose house the Qur'an was revealed. We are the ones whose, uh, when in every salat, when you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, that you send blessings upon. And yet now you come against us. You know, and everything he says fell on deaf ears. Summum bukman omyum fahumla yerhyun. Deaf, dumb, and blind. Nothing enters the heart. These ears, the physical ears, have no meaning if the ears are the, of the heart are shut. The physical eyes have no meaning if the eyes of the heart are shut. The tongue, the physical tongue has no meaning if the tongue of the heart is shut. You know, people can have nice speeches and talk all they want. Use big words. Doesn't mean a thing. You know, the Khawarij, the Rasulullah Sallallahu said, what, what about them? He said that they will exit Islam like an arrow through its prey. And if you look on the tip, there will be no blood. If you look on the shaft, there will be no blood. And if you look on the, on the end, there will be no blood. Meaning they will get nothing from their religion. And yet, he also said before that, he said that, he says it to his companions that when they recite the Quran, you will be ashamed of your recitation. And when you look at their salat, you will be ashamed of your salat. And when you look at their fasting, your fasting will seem insignificant to their fasting. And yet they get nothing from their religion. Even though superficially everything is there. But because the heart is devoid of the love of Allah and Rasulullah Wasallam, Even though they're doing all of the sunnah. You know, people think, oh, you keep a beard, oh, this is, you know, a great sunnah. 
Abu Jahal had a beard. If the beard is not truly connected to Rasulullah so it has no meaning. Every one of these people that has come against Imam Hussein al-Islam, every one of them says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Every one of them makes salat. To the extent that Shimr, he used to lead the Fajr Salat in the Masjid. <clears throat> Among the army you have 500 Qadi, judges. Hundreds of Hufaz. And yet they come against the one who is truly Islam. And who is not only Islam, but is true Iman. And after Imam Hussain al-Islam reminds them again who he is, he also tells them that if anyone if you ask for forgiveness now, you will be forgiven. Even after they have murdered his whole household. Because he's also a true representative of Rahmatul Alameen. Amr bin Saad. And Shimmer, when they hear this, you know, they look at the man and they say, Why, what are you waiting for? Attack him. You know, if you've ever seen lions and hyenas fight, you know, it's one lion. And you have hundreds of hyenas all over the place. And initially what happens is they're bold enough, they think, oh, we can take him. So they, they rush forward. And when the lion knocks them here and there, then they figure out, oh, you know, we got to get a different strategy here. And this is exactly what happens. So some of them rush forward, and Imam Hussein al-Islam, even though he hasn't eaten anything or drank anything in three days, he starts cleaning house. Whichever way his horse moves, rows upon rows fall back. You know, he inherited the shoulders from his father, Sayyidina Ali, the conqueror of Khaybar. And he has the blood of Rasulullah flowing through him. And so as he's knocking them here and there, now they eventually they start, when they realize... That this isn't going to, you know, they can't fight him one on one, or even two on one, or even five on one. Now they start shooting him with arrows. And eventually one of the arrows hits him in the chest where it passes into his heart. <clears throat> you know, they say when they counted, he was he was hit by 121 arrows. You know, this is why. You know, this is or this is the reason that these people could take so much. Is because they're not fighting for any anything. They are fighting solely for Allah and His Messenger. <laughs> and as they are fighting, they are seeing Rasulullah. <laughs> you know, Rasulullah said that you know the shuhada or the martyrs, 
even before his blood hits the ground, he sees his place in Jannah. And Imam Hussain al-Islam is Sayyid al-Shuhada. He is the master of the Shahada, of the martyrs. But when, they, when this last arrow hits him, now he gets off of his horse. And Shimmer comes forward to kill him, and he's still conversing with him, even in this condition. And he says, let me make my salat. It was time for Asr. Again, he had made Fajr with everyone with him. And then when the time for Dhuhr came, he made it as Salatul Khawf with the family. And now that everyone was martyred and he's by himself, and now Salatul Asr time comes in, he says, let me make my Salat. He had made Tayammam for Fajr and for Dhuhr. And now for Asr, he will make Salatul Ishq the Salat of true love. And the wudu for that he makes with his own blood. And because he cannot stand with all the arrows, he's on the ground laying. And in that condition when he's in sujood, you know, when he's in prostration, is when Shimmer comes and he kills him. But before this, you know, before he started his Salat, he had said to Shimmer, Shimmer had vitiligo. For those who don't know that, it's depigmentation of the skin. You know, it's it's an autoimmune disease where, where you know, the, the melanin gets attacked in the skin and you get depigmentation, so you see like white patches in the skin. And his was such that his hands and his face were depigmented. You know, Rasulullah Sallallahu said that I had said once that I see a ablak. Ablak is the horse, you know, where the, the face is white and the hooves are white. He says, I see a ablak dog who will dip his nose in the blood of my family. Allahu Akbar. And so Shimmer, he kills him. He beheads him, and as he's beheading him, he says, Allahu Akbar. Shimra was not just anybody. Shimra was also related to Sayyidina Ali through one of his wives, to the mother of Abbas Al-Amdar. Umm Banin, was related, Shimra was related to her. He was a scholar of the time. You know, it's like Hajjaj bin Yusuf, the Valim. Many people praise him. But as he's beheading Ab- Abdullah ibn uh, Zubair, Abdullah. Hajjaj is saying what? He's saying, Allahu Akbar. Multiple companions of Rasulullah so some said Hajjaj was kafir, but today people like to praise him. Shimmer. When that last arrow pierced Imam Hussain al-Islam, he says to them, he says that you, he says to the, to the people uh, through the army of Yazid, he says that you did not even care for the, for the uh, uh, discomfort or the, or the hurt or the pain of Rasulullah. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ahzab, Surah number 33. You know, the verse immediately after, إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي that verily Allah and His angels send, send blessings upon Rasulullah, on the Nabi, on the Nabi, 
صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما O oh, you who believe send blessings درود and salam in abundance not just درود but salam in salat what do we do you know because درود إبراهيمي has no salam in it but before درود إبراهيمي what do we say we say السلام عليك أيها النبي And if you take the literal translation of it, because ayyo is only for the one who is present. Ya is for the one who is far or close. Ayyo is only for the one who is present. It means assalamu alaikum. I say, I'm saying peace and peace upon you, O present Nabi. SubhanAllah. And, and Imam Ghazali, he says that when you say this, you should understand that Rasulullah is responding to you with a better response. So we say salam first and then we do durood. But the very next verse, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ لَعْنَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ That those who hurt Allah and His Messenger, <laughs> the curse of Allah is, is upon them in this world and the next. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared a grievous punishment for them. How do you hurt Allah? It's impossible. Can anyone hurt Allah? If all of creation rejects and denies Allah, does it matter? No. Yet he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ Allah." But he doesn't stop there. He says, "Wa Rasul." To hurt the Rasul is to hurt Allah. Allah. And the Rasulullah Sallam is seeing all of this in Karbala. So, do we think that he's pleased with all of this? That it does not hurt him? And if someone wants to question, "Oh, how can you say he's seeing?" The hadiths are present. Bibi Umm Salma, the mother of the believers, radiallahu anha. She is in Medina Munawwara. Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu. He is in Mecca Mukarrama. Both of them after Asr are in this state of meditation. And what do both of them see? They see Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his hair is not like his, his normal hair. And I don't want to say disheveled because Rasulullah SAW, if you look throughout his life, his hair never, uh, was never out of place. Nothing about him was ever out of place. Everything about him is exactly as Allah SWT loves for it to be. And yet they see him with dust upon him. And the hair was not like it was before. And if you read in the books, they say that the hair was disheveled. But again, I don't want to use that word for him. And they both ask him. And the hadiths are say, You know, it's not like even, you know, so-called other modern scholars ad admit that it's say. Just like, you know, Nasiruddin al-Bani has to admit that the hadith where Jibreel al-Islam came with the angel of rain to Rasulullah and brought some dirt from Karbala and told, so that dirt, Rasulullah he gave it to whom? He gave it to Bibi Umm Salma, radiallahu his wife, who at that time was the oldest wife, but she is the last to pass among the wives. So he also knew, and she was the only one who was still alive at the time of Karbala. So he gives, so when, he, when they see this, and, and then Rasulullah SAW tells them, he says, I am coming from Karbala, and they have murdered Hussein. So is the curse of Allah not upon them? And when she, when she, got up and she looked at that dirt. That dirt was now blood.
Time is up. So I'll stop here today, inshallah. We'll continue uh, next week. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding and fill our hearts with his love and the love of his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all of those whom they love, inshallah. Those who have not made sunnah, go with make sunnah.